Integrator back with their latest release, Yohane the Parhelion, Blaze in the Deep Blue, I think I'm saying that one right, but this, it's a Metroidvania experience, and with Inti's long-running successful releases, definitely been excited for this one ever since I got to try out the demo at Anime Fest 2023 here in LA. Now, does the final release deliver? However, that is what we're here to talk about. My name's Alex, this is Switch Corner, and if you enjoy the video, subscribe, it helps out the channel a huge amount. So diving into Yohani the Pylian, Blaze in the Deep Blue, it's a game stemming from the Love Alive anime franchise. Now from what I gather, Love Alive primarily focuses on a group of teenage girls aspiring to become a school idols, with several fantasy themed spin-offs under its belt as well. That seems to be where this game kind of falls into. Now full of disclosure, I am not familiar with the Love Alive universe, so if you are a fan I'd love to hear your thoughts on whether this anime is a must watch for everyone. Because of that, the game's storyline, while accessible to newcomers like me, likely holds an extra layer of appeal for those who are already fans. Now here we find ourselves in the mysterious deep blue dungeon, with friends missing and patchy memories. The objective here is straightforward, rescue your friends and unravel the mysteries of this ominous world. It is not overly complex, but it is engaging enough. Now as someone new to the franchise, I probably would have appreciated a deeper dive into the character's backstories, but the primary mission was easy enough to get on board with. The gameplay of Yohani, the Parhelion, Blaze in the Deep Blue can be best described as a fairly straightforward Metroidvania. It follows the classic formula, you explore, face boss battles, gradually unlock new abilities, and then use these to delve deeper into this expansive maze-like world. The map is sizable, divided into themed sections, think like volcanic areas and forests, and definitely adds a nice variety to the exploration. What really stands out in this game though is the way you acquire those new moves, while some abilities like wall of clinging or double jumping are found in chests, others are actually tied to rescuing those friends and you actually have two main attack types here, a standard weapon and then your partner. Now initially you do start with one partner but each friend you rescue adds a new ability to your arsenal. Switching between these partners as well is seamless just to tap of the right or left bumper. These partners and they do range in abilities, some are slow but deliver powerful blows, others can electrocute enemies, and then my personal favourite, a character that rolls forward, allowing you to traverse spiky terrain without taking any damage. It did lead to an issue by the end game, simply remembering who does what, but thankfully, if you do hold the trigger down, you get a character sprite preview, which was definitely beneficial. What might initially surprise players in Yohani the Pylian Blaze in the Deep Blue as well is the close quarters nature of the combat. This setup often puts you right in the thick of danger. Now while you do eventually gain access to some ranged moves, the games are primarily revolving around mastering your movement and getting a handle on the speed and the rhythm of each weapon. Now thankfully the movement mechanics here are exceptionally responsive, which I'd say stays true to Inti Create's usual style. An unexpected twist in the gameplay then is the crafting element. It is pretty straightforward, just access the pause menu where you can create up to four enhancements for your character. Now these enhancements can boost various stats such as power, health and DP. Now DP functions as a sort of stamina bar, basically every action including attacks depletes this bar which can only be replenished at these different save points. I found this system intriguing, though it definitely has its limitations, particularly in the later stages of the game, and this actually does lead to an element of strategy when it comes to those different character builds, which I really did appreciate. The enemy design then is truly exceptional. You'll encounter a diverse array of foes, each crafted not only to test the skills you've accumulated to this point, but also to encourage strategic weapon switches. The bosses in particular are a standout feature. They often boast screen filling intimidating designs and they really do add a real sense of threat. Now on that note, in terms of difficulty, while this game isn't the toughest metroidvania out there, the boss battles did catch me off guard a few times and when you are defeated, you're actually sent back here to a hub area. This is where you get the chance to regroup but also gear up. Basically, it offers a range of items for purchase, including health boosts, stat enhancements, and remedies for specific afflictions such as poison. You can also pick up some side missions here as well from saved characters. Honestly, they're nothing more than find a missing item, but what I did like here was this unlocks an additional attack move for that particular supporting character. Before we do get to the issues then, the map is not the most overly complex, but it does have a nice amount of variety from the aforementioned foes to platforming challenges, but then I'm particularly a fan of what it calls randomised locations, and there is one per area, and well here you guessed it, it's procedurally generated, but it adds a dash of variety for each time you must traverse it. 
Now, I do want to say I've had a ton of fun with this game. The controls are tight, the world varied, and the enemies creative, but there are some notable flaws that do hold it back from greatness. First of all, the game lacks on a tutorial up front. I was exploring, trying to figure out where to go next, and it didn't tell me that there's actually a star on the map that pointed me in the general direction. Basically, it's tiny. It took me a while to notice it. The game didn't actually tell me what it was. So yeah, that's a free bit of advice if you do jump in. The map design then doesn't lack in detail, but it definitely falls short in interactivity as well. When I hit dead ends, I found myself wishing I could mark them on the map instead. I resorted to jotting down notes, keeping track of where I was, and kind of speculating on what abilities might help me progress. A simple waypoint or even note adding feature would significantly enhance the navigation experience. Regarding the endgame, then I do have mixed feelings. As much as I enjoy Inti Create's work, their approach to the final sequence in this game is something they do rely on occasionally, which is basically face all of the game's bosses once again. The main game here actually spans about four to five hours until you reach this point, and then this part feels a bit like a cheap way to extend gameplay, and it definitely became frustrating, especially with the stamina depleting too rapidly. It basically forced me back to the last save room to replenish over and over, though I do appreciate at least the game features fast travel, which is accessible from the main menu. This led me then to another discovery. It became apparent it was easy to overpower enemies. Basically, by constantly reloading into a save room, this is pretty much instantaneous in the game, you can get yourself close to breakable pots for cash. Basically, I could endlessly enhance my character's attack and defense stats. This tactic made the endgame boss rush mode more of a grind over anything else. Including this time spent no grinding in the final boss sequence, it took me all in about 6 hours to complete the game, and now that I am done with it, there doesn't seem to be much reason to go back and play it again as I've discovered pretty much everything, and I actually believe I've seen everything the map has to offer. Not necessarily a bad thing, it's just not a game designed to keep you busy for weeks on end. Visually then, the game is a winner, Inti Creates consistently excels in this department, the pixel art is intricately detailed, the backgrounds are stunning, and the animations here are top notch. This includes both the main character and the supporting cast, who just add heaps of charm. Even the enemies are impressively varied, ranging from the tiny to the gigantic screen filling types. The user interface then is generally, well, you guessed it, user friendly, with menus that are straightforward to navigate. However, the crafting screen becomes somewhat cluttered in the latter stages of the game. A more streamlined layout, perhaps with better filter options, would improve the overall experience of this one. And as for the story presentation then, there aren't many cutscenes here, I wish they had done more with it, but instead the narrative unfolds through dialogue sections, accompanied by high quality character portraits. On the audio front, the game scores big. While there's limited dialogue, mostly consisting of characters calling out names during summons and occasional exchanges, it is well executed. The sound effects then, especially for weapons, are a standout feature. And with a wide array of craftable weapons, the game does an impressive job of giving each type a distinct auditory identity. But the real star of the show here is the music. Considering the game's roots in a franchise known for its musical element, that is not surprising. But each biome is accompanied by its own unique theme. And then a particularly memorable touch is certain songs that play when you're revived after defeat, complete with their original recordings. This aspect not only adds to the gameplay experience, but also pays homage to the franchise's musical heritage. So overall, I've had a lot of fun with Yohane the Parhelion, and while it is on the short side for the genre, I'm sure fans of the core franchise will have a blast. For everyone else, I think value is going to be the big question here. Can you justify the near $30 price tag for, let's call it, four to six hours of gameplay? It's also not without its issues as well. It's got a cheap ending to artificially extend the gameplay like they realized last minute this is actually pretty much on the short side. Also as well, as we said, there's a few quirks in its design. For me, it's a good 7 out of 10 today, and I'll for sure be spotlighting this in sales videos moving forward as its price begins to drop, but you tell me, is this one going into your library? So with that, hit subscribe, join us here for reviews, deals, news analysts daily, and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.